Welcome to Kitchen 143. I am your host, Michelle Aventajado, and today we are going to have some fun as we get together in the kitchen here. Okay, so we are also going to get a little bit cheesy, partly because, well, there's holiday cheer and we are only 18 days away from Christmas. Have you guys been good? Is Santa coming? And of course, partly because we have loads of cheese here to enjoy as we pair them with some beer. Today's episode, we are teaming up with Real California Milk to give us recommendations on how to pair these cheeses with our favorite drink here in the Philippines, beer. Yes, you heard that right. It may seem like an unlikely pairing, but trust me, it works. Cheese really does go with anything. Joining us today is Mark Todd, the real cheese dude, and Ian Santos from One World Deli. Hi, guys. Hello. How are Hello. you? Groovy. Awesome. Cheesy. <laughs> um, as always, guys, make sure to watch out for the Quiz the Cook questions. Up for grabs this week is something really fun. Five gift certificates from Sourdough Cafe and Deli. Hi, Chef Alvin. Worth 5,000 pesos, guys. Make sure that you share the live stream. If you haven't done it already, do it now. Guys, some of you lost out on your chance to win last week's episode when we had um, our holiday activities and our holiday gathering episode because you didn't share the live stream. So go ahead. Remember, sharing is caring and let everybody know that we are pairing cheese and beer today. As always, we want to see where you guys are tuning in from. So make sure to leave um, leave your comments in the section, the chat box um, underneath the live stream there. We want to see. We have some, hey, Athea, you're here again. How are you? Good to see you. L-O, you're here. Hi. Thanks, Reg. Thank you for the kind words. We are so happy. So if you have questions for Mark about cheese or questions about how to pair cheese and beer, stay tuned because we're going to um, talk all about that. And of course, Ian is here to answer questions about beer and wine as well. So let's get started. Tis the season to make a grazing board, guys. Mm -hmm. um, if we were going to put some California cheeses together, let's say for Noche Buena or for our guests who are going to come over, or even if we wanted to share them with some of our friends um, and send them out, what are some of the things that you would put with our California cheeses? Well, when you, uh, uh, if you're making a festive holiday board, um, you're probably going to want to include the holiday type uh, dessert items um, like uh, uh, figgy pudding. I'm just kidding. Uh, it, goes great with all, <laughs> it goes great with almost any types of fruits. Uh, it go, dried fruits, particularly, uh, it, they go great with nuts. Um, the any of the roasted tree nuts are wonderful. Um, if it's uh, the holiday and you like uh, uh, charcuterie, cheese goes excellent with charcuterie. Uh, you can include olives on the board. Um, most any of the uh, snack type items go excellent with cheese. Excellent. And Ian, um, what would you add to all of the dried fruits, the, um, the other things, the sweets and the nuts? What else would you add to this? Well, I'll, I'll definitely go with different flavor profiles. And also, to help you cleanse your palate, I'll just add some crackers to that. Mm -hmm. um, pearl onions are one of my favorite things on, on the cheese platter. It helps you cleanse your palate because of that acidity that you get uh, from that thing. So it's something nice. It's always nice to have something that will add flavor component and texture also. Fun. That's what I call a party in your mouth because I like to do the salty, the sweet, the crunchy, yep. right? So that's actually how we like to enjoy um, our cheese boards over here, our charcuterie mm -hmm. boards. Um, but we're talking about pairing beer and cheese today. So that will be a little bit different if we are making a board to taste. So what we're really going to do here is look for the flavor profiles. Mark, can you tell our viewers why we call you the cheese dude. Um, probably because I have been studying and teaching uh, people about cheese for almost 30 years now. 
and um, it's allowed me to travel all over the world, including the wonderful Philippines. I've been all over the Philippines, many islands, love it, love the food. Um, and I have been able to travel the world and uh, spread uh, the gospel of cheese. That's why I am the cheese dude. Hallelujah. And I love that class that I was able to take with you. I think that, that was about one. two or three years ago, right? You taught me how to make cheese. Yep. Cheese and butter both. So now you can do, do it at home and have some fun. And uh, the kids are kids are fun watching them make butter. It um, yeah. takes them a while, but uh, they get the hang of it. And they get to get that energy out, of exactly. course. Exactly. So, um, Ian, we have the cheese dude. Does this mean you're the deli dude or should we call you the wine dude? Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself too? Absolutely. So I'm actually known as the wine dude, I would say. I mean, that would be a nice nickname from now on, right? Um, <laughs> I'm actually a sommelier by profession. I'm the 2019 Philippine Sommelier Competition champion. Thank you. Um, wow. Uh, wine is Correct. really something that I love to drink and share with friends and family and there's always nice uh, it's always nice to have something you know good to explore your palate with so beer is another thing that we study about so you know we're doing a little bit of a beer and cheese pairing for today so which is fantastic and actually a lot of my friends have never heard of pairing beer and cheese together exactly. as well Right. So let's see where some of our viewers are tuning in from. We have, um, let's, oh, uh, Reg, Mark, Reg is saying, hi, Mark, you look good. <laughs> <laughs> and you lie like a Persian rug. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So we have some viewers tuning in from QC. We have viewers watching from Pasig, some of our regular viewers like Mark and Jing, of course, they say cheese is life. Hallelujah. Hey, Vanji, how are you? So glad you're tuning in. I know you and I like to have our cheese and wine together as well. So exciting. So I'm glad you guys are here. Um, I'm going to show you based on the advice of um, what Mark suggested. So guys, this is a bit different than if you were to put together a, a cheese board for the holidays, right? Mm -hmm. I did go a little extra um, because we are just pairing the cheese with the beer. So the things that we're gonna put on the board now are more like what um, Ian and uh, Mark were talking about as palate cleansers, right? So I put a few things there, but very simply, uh, we'll share, I'll share with you now what I put together for the seven different cheeses that we're going to try along with the seven different beer, beers. Cool. So um, I'll just share with you what I put in the front, in the foreground, we have some dried cranberries. Mark said it was nice to add dried fruit. So we have mm -hmm. cranberries and I also added some dates. Um, for the tart, I didn't have the onions that um, that Mar uh, that Ian was talking about, but I did throw in some cured olives. And then I just put some crackers, a little bit of honey, honeycomb, which I also got from One World Deli. It's here on the side. And then some almonds, right? So the star of the show today is the cheese. And of course, we know... Well, me, I'm a little bit biased. Of course, you guys know I'm from the States and I love my California cheeses. I actually am very um, proud and excited to share that some of the cheeses on the board here, I was actually able to visit where they make some of those cheeses. So um, I did get to visit Fiscalini. Um, I've tried the Cowgirl, um, other cheeses too. So I'm really excited to share these cheeses with you while Mark and Ian walk us through the flavor profiles and how they pair with um, the beers. So guys, do you have your cheese ready as well? Let me get, uh, let's see I do, all set. Awesome, ready. Very plain, very simple. We'll definitely go, go with the flavor profiles of the beer and the cheeses for today. There you go. And yes, we do have some local beers that we are pairing everything with today. Um, and this is actually, Ian, we were talking about yeah. the beer culture and how like these microbreweries and these smaller breweries making these mm -hmm. new kinds of wines are definitely new to the Philippines. 
Yes, and yeah, it's always nice to have local breweries give us uh, give us different flavor profiles. Um, considering that we're a beer drinking country, also we love beer in the Philippines. But uh, craft breweries are offering different flavor flavor profiles to different sets of for different sets of food, and something that will go well with almost any kind of Filipino cuisine as well. So, always good to explore. Excellent. So because the star of the show today is real California milk cheeses, I'm really excited. So, um, Mark, tell us a little bit about uh, cheese making in California and, you know, dairy in general. Well, it's uh, it's a very old tradition in uh, California. Um, the tradition here goes back at least 250 years since uh, it was a Spanish um, uh, territory. And when the United States took over, it just became the United States, but it was still making cheese. Um, they, the Spanish missionaries came in the 1700s and brought the, the tradition here. So it's been here a long time. Uh, California is the largest milk producer in the States and uh, produces some of the greatest cheeses in America. Um, cheese making, which is technically called uh, uh, queso, um, I think queso, there's a word for that. I queso culture? Culture. Culture. That's it. You know, yeah. I, I read that in a book once, and I tell you, it's uh, that's a pretty pretty trivia piece of knowledge. But I I think I'm going to stash that one away now. I make okay. culturist. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I like that too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but, uh, okay. Cheeses. California makes dozens and dozens of different cheeses, um, dozens of original uh, California cheeses that are made nowhere else in the world. Um, and uh, we have some of the most award winning uh, cheese makers anywhere uh, or case of culturalists uh, anywhere in the world. Um, so I'm very proud to be representing uh, the dairy farmers and, and uh, the cheeses from the state. Right. And I'm excited. I think we're going to be tasting one of those award winning cheeses today, too, from Fiscalini, if I remember correctly. I think almost, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, at least five of these cheeses have won major awards. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm excited. Okay. So our cheese board is ready. We we have um, Ian is ready. Mark is ready with, with our tasting. And we're going to walk through how to pair the different cheeses with the different beers we have on hand. Um, mm -hmm. But before we do that... We can also actually open up with some questions for the quiz, the cook questions. Are you guys ready in the comments section? I see that we have some comments here. Um, oh, Amelda, it's your first time to watch the show. Amelda Melchar, Ooh. thank you for watching. We are so glad you are tuned in. Geneve is here. Hi, Geneve. She's one of our regular viewers. Julian Serenio, he says, he says, oh my God, cheese and beer. Why have I not thought of this? Um, well, now you can watch and learn along with us, with Ian and I, as Mark tells us all about how to pair the cheese and the beer together. Hi, Ona. Um, Sacto for Christmas. Yes, Julian, cheese and yeah. beer is great and reg of course says love fiscalini's old world cheddar yes you bet. that is one of my favorites too and um the other fiscalini cheese that we'll be trying today the Leon Leonza. all right so are we ready for our first quiz the cook question you guys know the drill you must share the live stream. So go ahead and do that now. Make sure it's set to public because if our social media team doesn't see it, we can't award you the GC. As always, this is the first question. So the first person to answer correctly will win the GCs from Sourdough Cafe and Deli. Hey, Chef Alvin, how are you? Um, and you will win 5,000 pesos worth of whatever you would like to purchase for cheese. Okay, so as you know it, you got to answer on the Rappler Facebook page in the stream or on the Mama and Manila Facebook page. Are you guys ready? I'm delaying. Okay. With you also, one more thing, you have to 
remember that you have to live within Metro Manila because um, we will be shipping these cheeses to you. So <laughs> if you don't live in Metro Manila and you still want to win, it's a perfect Christmas gift that you can give to your family or your friends, your cheesy friends who love cheese. Um, but they must live in Metro Manila. So let's go ahead. We can ask Ian, would you please do me the honors of reading the first quiz the cook question? Absolutely. All right. So for the first question, which U.S. state is known for the quality of its cheeses? You're going to have to pay royalties. <laughs> so we have, let's see, it looks like we have some winners. Guys, we won't announce the winners just, the winner just yet. Remember that you have to have shared the live stream. If we check your Facebook profile and it's not there, we can't award you the GC for 5,000 pesos worth of cheese from Sourdough Cafe and Deli, care of Real California Milk. So, okay, it looks like um, we have a winner. Here we go. It looks like Athea Venice. Athea Venice, congratulations. Oh, whoops. That was there. Vernice. Sorry. Okay, let's see. Double check. Okay, winner. Just checking here in the comment section. And if everybody has also shared the live stream, Athea Vernice, congratulations. Looks like you are the winner. Congratulations. So the Rappler team will be getting in touch with you um, to find out where they can send your gift certificate. So be sure to answer when they send you a message. We do have a second question, guys. There is another chance to win. Of course, it is very generous here. We are so excited to share cheese. We are cheesy cheesy friends after all. Um, so let's start with Mark. I know it's quite late for you where you are now, but I hope you could read the next quiz the cook question. Guys, remember, as always, this is not the first winner. We will actually do one, four, three, four, four. Second question means the fourth person to answer correctly our quiz the cook question who has shared the live stream lives in metro manila and answers correctly okay so be sure to share there's time to share the live stream now so go ahead and share it and mark is going to read us our next quiz the cook question which is what do we call the craft of making cheese and this was actually very interesting for me, of course, when we were talking about this earlier. No, Mark, I know you've been in the cheese industry for like how many years? Three decades. <laughs> Three decades. So you have been talking cheese for a long time. You said you we know you came to the Philippines and you've traveled all over, mm -hmm. right? Teaching people all about exactly. cheese. So in fact, I, I was going to say um, beer and cheese was new in America. Um, I believe that uh, my friend uh, Reggie Heiss and I were the first people to put it on in a large setting in 1995 at the American Culinary Federation. We did a beer and cheese pairing and it sold the, uh, the entrance sold out in a few hours because everybody was like, what's that beer and cheese? That's cool. Um, exactly. And it really is a uh, it's a natural pairing that goes back thousands of years because beer and cheese both grew up on the farms in Europe. So beer and cheese is a very natural pairing. Uh, been going on for thousands of years. All right. Do we have a winner? We have lots of comments. Good. Wow. They actually remember fourth person to answer correctly. Okay. All right, looks like we do have a winner. Winner, winner. 
chicken dinner. Winner, winner, cheesy dinner. That's it. We'll have cheesy dinner today. Winner, winner. Like so, it. Ian, are you, are you, um, are you a beer person too? Yeah, I'm a big beer person. I love beer. Again, I grew up in the Philippines, which is a big beer drinking country. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't get to explore craft beers until I was, you know, in the I, until I was in my twenties. And, and until I lived in the United States. So coming back in 2017, I was surprised that we have, you know, breweries like Monkey Eagle that really has that passion and love for really helping us explore with our palate. So, yeah, yes, I'm a big beer drinker and I'm a big cheese eater also. So Fantastic. anything that will help me explore with my palate. Fantastic, because we like that as well. Okay, so we have the winner, Jing Santos. Congratulations for getting it right, Casa Culture. Um, that is your trivia for today. Congratulations. So be sure um, our social media team will be getting in touch with you so you can share your um, delivery details. So are we ready to taste some beer and cheese? I am. I am. I am. All right. Me, me, me. Okay, Mark. Let's so, um, let's get started. You got it. Um, well, the first one. Um, uh, are we going to just jump right into them? Yeah, we can. We can start talking about the cheeses first, and then yeah. if we have, you know, some of the packaging. I have one out. I can share as well. The uh, uh, the De Stefano. Let's see. There, there you go. go. De Stefano. I've got burrata because that's what I had handy. Okay. There we go. Straight and up, Mark. Right on. California. Yay. California. So this is a, a, a fresh mozzarella, which is a, a cheese that's um, very delicate. It's got a very milky flavor. It tastes basically one step removed from the milk that it was made. Um, it's uh, got a delicate texture, uh, and it, it uh, really has the, uh, the sweetness of the, the, the fresh milk. Um, along with a little bit of a culture flavor to it. Uh, but it goes beautifully with a, um, a kind of a light Pilsner-style beer. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I, I haven't had the free flow, but everything I read about it says it should be a good pair. Okay. So when we taste the beer, I'm opening uh, – when we taste the cheese, I'm opening my beer now and I'm going to pour mm. it. Um, do we taste the cheese first and then sip the beer? Like how do you want us to taste yeah, Typically, I would, oh, yo, you good. You go for it. He's a sommelier. Okay, so I would suggest that you have a taste of the cheese first, and then after swallowing that cheese, have a sip of the beer and just really let that flow and you know revolve around your palate and see how it, the flavors of the beer change, and then maybe have a, a taste of the cheese again after and just see how it affects one another. So that's okay. really the best way. Okay, so today Ian and I have the De Stefano mozzarella, or as my Italian American paisans would say, the mozzarella. Um, the mozzarella. So um, we're gonna try the De Stefano mozzarella while um, Mark tries the burrata, and I will follow um, how Ian said, we'll taste the cheese first. Yeah, just have a taste of it. See how the texture is. See how that all of that flavors come out. Which Mark can explain how mozzarella is. Well, my, the, this this is the mildest thing that is going to be on the entire table because really, you're, it it this is the expression of milk. That is that is what mozzarella is is fresh mozzarella is just the expression of the quality of the milk. Um, so when you taste it, you're basically tasting very very fresh dairy flavor. Uh, and that that goes beautifully uh, with that that the uh, uh, pilsner pilsners have a balance of of hop and uh, malt so that it's an even balance that sets up your palate to be accepted uh, accepting to both fats and sugars that allows you to taste uh, to enjoy both of those flavors. Exactly, and what I love about pilsner being paired with mozzarella is that it doesn't overpower the cheese. Exactly. Like it actually accentuates the flavor of it. You know, and same as a beer also. All of the flavors come out after that cheese. I, I find it, it brings out the sweetness in the beer. I mean, in the cheese. The cheese yes. tastes sweeter when you put the beer on. Yes, um, 
I was going to say that um, after I had the beer, the cheese tasted sweeter. Yep. So that's yeah. that, and one of the great things about pairing is mozzarella is great. Beer is great. But you put them together and you get completely different flavors than you had before. And the, the fun part about doing these pairings, and last year my friend John and I did about 70 beers and with 20 cheeses each. Wow. Um, wow. We'll, we'll, we'll treat us on it. And the fun was doing things that you didn't expect. You taste one with this and you go, wow, that, that brings <clears throat> completely new flavors in your mouth that were not there before. Um, right. Ian can, can attest to this. That's one of the beautiful things about pairing beverages with food is it creates a third flavor. Exactly. It's a never-ending discovery of flavors. That's what I love about it. Be careful. You'll start looking like me, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, or I me. like that already. <laughs> so if you guys do have any cheese or beer questions or pairing questions, please leave them in the chat in the comment section so that we can see them. Mark and Ian are here to answer all of your questions. Guys, these are the cheese and the beer experts. So we are going to learn from them today. All right. So that was delicious. I loved the mozzarella and the beer together. That was fantastic. Um, and Mark, you pointed out that the De Stefano packaging had mm -hmm. the real California milk seal. So guys, whenever you want to look for California cheeses and you want to be sure of the quality, all you have to do is hashtag look for the seal. Um, that's where you know you'll be getting high quality cheeses made in California um, with California milk. So, okay, I think we did. You, Ian, did you taste yours already, or did I yeah, just? I did. Taste you did? Okay. I did. Yeah. Um, we can move on to the second one. Yeah. Well, the second one we're going to be doing is the uh, uh, Cowgirl Creamery's Mount Tam, which is a triple creme um, that is called a surf, a bloomy rind or a, a surface ripened, soft ripened cheese. The, the rind is formed by a white mold um, that's in the penicillin family. And as the mold forms, it pulls calcium out of the cheese to form the rind, and it makes the cheese get softer and sags out uh, almost like butter. Um, as it gets warm, it will have a, um, a distinct kind of a sag to the edge. There you go. You can see. I don't know if you can tell it on that. But it, uh, um, the cheese is very rich. Triple creme means that it's one step away from butter. This exactly. is about 75% butter fat by dry weight. A stick of butter is 82. So this is really close to butter. When you put it in your mouth, you know that. Um, it gets a little earthiness from the rind. You get a little almost like a mushroomy or forest floor kind of flavor to it. Uh, and th pairing that with this Belgian wit, uh, Belgian wit beers or white wheat beers um, have um, they use a lot of spices in their brewing. They use coriander. They use uh, bitter uh, orange peel, uh, several different seasonings that give it a unique flavor. And those seasonings uh, with that beer base is what's going to make it go really well with this buttery cheese. Yeah, it, it blends perfectly with the cheese also because that Belgian wheat ale that we're having right now is very, it has that kind of great texture to it. It's not as light as the Pilsner. It mm -hmm. elevates that buttery, creamy flavor of the cheese also, which is what I love about this wheat ale. And even on its own, even if you drink the beer on its own, it's very refreshing. It's very mm -hmm. easy on the palate. So again, it's something that would not overpower the cheese. Something that mm -hmm. would just go and blend with it. I love it. Really mm. good. I had to have another bite. Oh, I'm telling you that. <laughs> The pair, that pairing, I mean, the, the brand I'm getting is from the United States, Allagash White. Oh, yeah, good one. From Maine. From Maine. Yeah, it's one of my yeah. favorites. Uh, awesome. And this is the classic uh, wit beer glass. This one comes from Hogart, Hogarten, but uh, this is the classic glass that a wit beer is served in. Very I always nice. like to have the classic glasses. So those what herbs definitely here? help then. There you go. Yeah, so this is the Witful Thinking by Monkey. I love Eagle it. Brewery. Awesome. Really good wheat beer. Yeah, and this Monkey Eagle Brewery, I think it's it's just a hop, skip, and a jump from 
um, Metro Manila. No, it's yes. in yes. Tagaytay. It's in Tagaytay. Yeah, correct. Yeah. The very brewery is exactly. in Tagaytay. They've been making beers for quite a few years now, which is really good. And quality-wise, it's something that can compete with other international brands also. Yeah, Good I've tried time. I've tried some of them as well. Um, yeah, so okay. So really so far we've tried um, the mozzarella uh, and we've also tried the MT Tam, which is like a triple cream brie. Super wow. creamy, buttery. Um, it's really yummy. What do MT, we have next? MT is for Mount, by the way. Mount Tam. Mount, Mount, Tam. Mount Tamil yeah. Pius is the name of the, the tall mountain that this creamery is at the foot of by the ocean. The mountain behind him behind him is called Mount Tamil Pius. So Mount Tam mm -hmm. is that's kind of what locals just call it for short, Mount Tam. Because Tamil <laughs> Pius is kind of a hard name to say a lot. Right. It is. It is. So, yeah, that's where they got the name, Mount Tam. Um okay. and uh, Tomarashi, uh, which obviously comes from Togarashi, uh, Japanese seasoning that's very famous. Um, this uh, has um, uh, shichimi uh, pepper um, or shichimi seasoning, which is uh, like nori and and uh, poppy seed, sesame seed, uh, actually marijuana seed, and uh, um, uh -oh. <laughs> ginger and a uh, little red pepper. So it's a very complex flavor cheese. Don't worry. You won't get happy. So the thing that I like about tomarashi. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, boy, that's good cheese. Mm-hmm. We are pairing this with. We're oh. pairing this with a blonde ale, which is very interesting because this kind of cheese is not something that's a very common, I would say, especially in the Philippine market. But you know that spice that it has to it, that sense of, uh, like it kind of wakes you up, it, it gives that cheese some life to it. Uh, right. Usually it elevates the alcohol perception of the beer, but this one is doesn't really make your beer very bitter. It doesn't elevate the alcohol percentage uh, on the palate, which is just something that's very mellow. I, I think the, the, reason be, the reason that is the case is that this is not just a, a chili pepper cheese it has a lot of umami characteristic because from the the, yes. the seeds the the sesame uh yeah. the uh, the nori seaweed that goes in it yes so it picks up a lot of those umami flavors and cheese is generally an umami anyway so with all that umami it balances out the heat which keeps that that bitterness of the beer at bay um yes. That's one of the reasons that cheese is like that. And once we get to that Fiscalini old world cheddar, you'll see why that's the king of pairing beer and cheese. That cheese goes with virtually every beer on the planet um, because which of that. Very good. Yeah, which is very good. Because normally if I see spice in a certain mm -hmm. dish, I'd always tell everybody to go for the beverage with the lowest alcohol content. But right. for some reason, this just blends very well together and... You know, it actually elevates that spice and that umami flavors to the cheese too. And I'm doing the Belgian version. A good one, yeah. And that's that's definitely got a high, a, a fairly serious alcohol content, and it I find it goes just beautiful with that cheese. It, it really opens up the uh, the I, I get more of the nori flavor and more of the a little bit of the sesame flavor on the finish. Um, right. As I'm sitting here now, I get the set a little of the sesame flavor in the finish. I, I've so got I, I agree. Cheese. It definitely tasted the nori, um, mm -hmm. but then when I had it with the beer, it actually the beer was even a little bit sweeter from mm -hmm. from trying yes. um, the the rashi, the tomarashi. Yeah. So the thing that I liked actually about uh, the Point Reyes labels, they make it really easy for us who may not know much about cheese and pairing. Um, if you guys end up purchasing any of the Point Reyes, the Tomarashi, um, or the Toma Provence, there's even a Toma Truffle, there's quite a, a few of the Toma flavors. Um, it has on the label some of the things that you could pair it with or ways that you could use it in cooking. So for the Tomarashi, 
I thought it was interesting that um, it says it's good with Pilsner. You can put it in tacos. And of course, you can just eat it with seaweed, which, of course, well, it just makes so much sense. So I love that that does that also. The Point Reyes makes it easy for those of us who may not be familiar with the cheeses. I always found 25 years ago when I first started doing this, I did demos in stores for cheese companies sometimes. And if you want to get a product into a customer's basket, give them two beverages it goes with and two suggestions on how to use it. It's always in the case. Don't give them three. It confuses them. Don't give them more than three choices of cheese. It confuses them. Simple choices, quick to direct suggestions. Don't you want that? And they always go, yes. That's the key. Amen. Yes. And of course, who doesn't want cheese? Um, my, I think we're coming up with our my, one of my faves, actually. You mentioned it earlier, um, Mark. I'm really excited to try this one. Well, I've had it quite a few times, so I like this one. I'm excited to pair it with the beer. The Leonza? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Leonza is uh, one of my favorite cheeses. Um, the first year that we took that to Japan, I brought it to the... Uh, um, Tokyo Cheese Society, and we did a uh, tasting, and we did 40 different cheeses from California, and that was almost to a person everyone's favorite cheese. And I brought a wide range of cheeses, and it surprised me that that was the one out of all of them that almost everybody in the room picked as their favorite cheese. It's one of my favorites. I feel like it's a versatile cheese. Like, you could eat it plain you could put it in your cooking you could grate it on top of different dishes as well and sure. Sure. Um, i've used it all different ways in my kitchen so well, i'm excited they, uh, to see. yeah it's an alpine mountain cheese recipe meaning that it's it, uh, the, the recipe originated in the alps around switzerland in the border of switzerland and italy italy where the, the family's from originally and the cheeses from that region are known we're not only being good table cheeses, but excellent cooking cheeses. That's where fondue came from. That's why you have uh, the, the melted cheeses that are so famous in that region. Uh, raclette, the, the after uh, ski um, dinner, that all came from the, the mountains of the uh, Alps. So this cheese is has that flavor. It's got a real nuttiness to it. Um, mm. and it has a little bit of a... Um, well, it's a propionic bacteria, but that won't mean anything to you guys. Uh, but it gives it a distinct flavor that is got, it's a little bit of a bite, but it's different than cheddar. It's not sharp like a cheddar, but it does have a little kind of a bite to it on the finish. Um, it's and that is, I think, what goes beautifully with the blonde ale. Yeah, which is very yes. nice. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually surprised. Um, this cheese happens to be like a very palate friendly type of cheese oh, yeah. which can go well with almost any type of beer but the blonde ale that we have right now which michelle just showed everybody is actually a very creamy very sweet like almost like caramel type of uh, mm. blonde ale v much heavier than the first blonde ale that we have okay uh this would have more texture to it this is much on the it's, this is more on the sweeter side of the blonde ale also uh, which kind of like adds some texture to the cheese as you eat it and as you go with the beer on. Ah, Very nice. Excellent. Yeah, I, I mean, th that's one of the things that I tell people. If if you put 100 cheeses in the middle of a room and 100 wines on one side and 100 beers on the other side, you'll find 20 wine and cheese pairings that are just amazing. You'll find 90 beer and cheese pairings that are really amazing. So <laughs> beer and cheese is actually a more natural pairing than wine. The main reason, malt. Yes. Wine does not have malt. And when you malt grain and ferment it, the sweetness that it brings to the beer is what cheese just loves. It really does go well then. Yep. So what if we don't... Years. <laughs> it, it really does. So guys, I wish you could taste this for all of the viewers. Of course, we know that the Quiz the Cook question winners will be tasting, having their own um, their own cheeses that they can taste and pair with beers in their own homes for the holidays. Um, but if some of these weren't available, um, let's say the Leonza, 
which is my fave. Um, if you didn't have the blonde ale or if we couldn't find the psychedelic, psychedelic blonde, what would we pair it with um, in addition or in, the, in place of? Uh, with the Leonza, I would probably lean towards anything that uh, has moderate hops. Um, I would stay away from the strongly hopped beers, the IPAs. Some cheeses do well with them. The hops on this one tend to bring out a little of that almost bitter flavor. They accentuate yes. the bitter flavor, and it, that pr brings a bitterness out of the cheese that's not too good. Uh, so so okay. stick with uh, pilsners, um, stick with lagers, uh, stick with um, um, ales, like nut brown ale. Uh, an English nut right. brown ale is beautiful with this one. Uh, a Belgian double, um, which has got a really malty character. It's almost like drinking malted milk. Um, mm. That one goes beautiful with this cheese. Uh, but then that beer goes beautiful with almost every cheese. <laughs> so, um, Fantastic. Okay, that's what I would go with. Fantastic. And I Ian, all of these cheeses are available at One World Deli, correct? Yes. Cool. Yes. So guys, if even if you aren't one of the lucky, the plucky, lucky five winners who gets to take home 5,000 pesos worth in GCs for cheese that you can purchase and um, enjoy in your own home, you can go ahead and visit One World Deli. Ian, where's One World Deli if they wanted to check it out? Okay, so we're located in Jupiter Street in Makati. It's in Bel Air in Makati. So tomorrow, okay. December 8th, is I know where our... That is. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow we're having our soft opening. So we're welcoming people who'd like to, uh, you know, check out the store. Uh, we're we're bringing out all of our seafoods, all of our wines and beers and meats also, which is a well-curated selection. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead and check us out, oneworlddeli.com, and also visit the store in Jupiter Street. Fantastic. So I know that my husband will probably go and visit tomorrow <laughs> um, just because of all of the things that you guys will have available. So you guys can visit One World Deli or you can visit OneWorldDeli.com to go ahead and order your real California milk cheeses. Um, let's check in with our viewers. We've tasted our four, our first four cheeses and we've paired them with our first four beers. I am, I will admit, I don't drink beer often and I've had quite a few sips of the four beers. So I promise, I promise to, um, Stay straight here in terms of being able to read our comments and seeing where everybody is tuning in from. Okay, you guys. Hey, Powie. How are you? Glad you're watching. And I see we have Imelda. Yes, you you hope to be one of the winners. So make sure you share the live stream. We do have some quiz the cook questions coming up. Remember that if you do not live in Metro Manila, you must have a family or a friend who lives in Metro Manila that you would love to share your cheese with. Um, make sure to share the live stream. And of course, um, make sure you're your, your post is on public. We have to be able to see it. Guys, some of you who won last week, you weren't able to collect because we didn't see your shares. Um, again, the first, it's not the first person for this. This is the third question. So it's one, four, three. The third person to answer correctly will win a GC that they can use for cheese in Sourdough Cafe and Deli. Make sure to say what's up to Chef Alvin when you go, say, go see him. Um, he's a good friend and I'm so happy that you guys will get to check out his place. Okay. You. Mark, would you like to read our next quiz the cook question? First, I got to say, tasting this beer makes me want bangus. Makes you want? Bangus. Man bangus. Yeah. <laughs> I, want, I want fried fish. I want the little fried oh. fish, man. Bangus. Oh, bangus. 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 Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want. Uh, I love mm. it. Oh, I let's love see. It. Yeah. So let my, what's the next question? Um, I think it's something about name one of the cheeses we've had so far. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Let's do wow, that. That's one. easy. Guys, that's super easy. Let's see how many of you were paying attention when we were talking about the four cheeses. Um, it looks like 
Uh, we definitely that. have some people who are paying attention. So lots of oh, different yeah. answers coming up. Yeah. I like all four of those cheeses. We won't mention them now, right, Ian? We're not going to give them hints. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, remember, this is the third question. So it's one, four, three. The third person to answer correctly with a with an answer of one of the four cheeses, one of the real California milk cheeses that we have um, tried already and paired with our beer, um, where Mark and Ian have walked us through how to pair and what um, goes well. I think we have a winner. Yeah. The winner is Shane Patayon. Villa Flores. Congratulations, Shane. You answered correctly with Leonza, which is one of my favorites from Fiscalini. And um, I, I am sure that you will enjoy all of the cheeses from Real California Milk. Now, guys, remember, if you didn't win, you weren't one of the three winners, you can visit One World, De one World Deli for their grand opening tomorrow, um, where they will grand opening, sorry, soft opening. Did you say, Ian? Yes. Yeah, tomorrow. For their soft opening, oh. and you can go ahead and purchase any of the cheeses that we are trying today. Um, if you'd like to replicate this cheese tasting fiesta, of course, you can purchase those cheeses there as well. Um, Mark, I think we do have the fourth question, the quiz, the cook question. Um, but before we ask that question, Oh, I'm so glad to see. It looks like you guys are really paying attention, especially some of the viewers here who named all four. Wow, that's impressive. Good job. Try that. <laughs> Good job. So I think my favorite from all of these, of course, I mentioned the Leonza was one of my favorites because I like it. Actually, I do use it in cooking, um, but I haven't had the Tomarashi yet. So trying it today was very exciting for me. I really liked all the different flavors there. Yeah. yeah. Flavor Mark, change is like very popular. It is, right? Yeah. Ian, what was your fave from the first four? Uh, you know what? My favorite of the cheeses would be the Mount Tam. Just very creamy, very buttery. So I love brie. Fun. I love... Brilla Savaran from France also. So this is something that definitely uh, makes me excited. <laughs> so buttery, so creamy. Yeah. That's the cheese. I, you know, we talked about this earlier, guys, when we were off cam and I was asking you guys if you had kids. Well, I have four kids. I don't mind sharing cheese with my husband, but sometimes I've been known to like hide the cheese in the back of the cheese drawer. And this... This MT Tam is one that might go in the back also, just because it was so good as well. Um, Mark, let's read our next Quiz the Cook question. But before we do, let's not show that tile. It's the um, question. Remember the fourth? I thought we, I can't we read asked. It. I we thought asked. I asked what, which one we uh, which one we've shown. Oh, so Ian, sorry, Ian. Yeah, I will ask ahead. you no to read this next one. <laughs> it's okay. We can all read the, these questions as well. Um, but before Ian, before we let you read it, I'm just going to remind everybody: hashtag sharing is caring, guys. Make sure you share the live stream. You can't win if you don't share. We want to make sure you're sharing the cheesy love with all of your friends and followers, so that they can learn more about beer and cheese pairing um, with real California milk as well. So share the live stream. You must live within Metro Manila or have a relative that you can share them with, because these cheeses obviously are perishable. We want to be able for you to go ahead and collect them in um, Sourdough Cafe in Delhi using that GC worth 5,000 pesos. Okay, guys, Ian, let's ask the next question. All right. So how old is the California dairy industry? So if you guys were paying attention, Mark and Ian and I were talking about that quite a bit ago that was like early on we were talking and um chatting and it was just something he just slipped in there while we were talking about how cheese is made and of course um cheese made in california so i know you were talking about like we were talking about earlier mount tam right um and 
the different places where the dairy farms are located also affects, you know, this is just something I learned from my experience with real California milk. Um, it affects not only the milk, of course, but then of course, the milk that's produced by the cows and how the cheese is made. Mm -hmm. um, some of these different dairy farms are located in different places all over California. And we can see that difference in some of that in the cheeses. Um, right, Mark? Could you Absolutely. elaborate a little? Yeah. The, uh, the, the French have a term called terroir, um, which means the flavor of place. And it refers to what a, the, the, the things that make your product different because of where it came from. So if you grew a grape in on this hill in France or on this hill in California or on this hill in Australia, it's the same exact grape, but you will get different flavors out of it based on where it was grown from the soil, the wind, the air, the water, everything about it goes into producing all of the, the microchemicals that create flavor. And so the flavor of place is very important. Um, cheeses are, uh, the, the cows eat different things from different regions. Cows on the coast of Normandy in France produced camembert. If you were inland around Paris, the cows were producing brie. Camembert is a stronger cheese because what the cows ate is different than what the cows inland were eating. The, the coast had salt grasses, it influenced the flavor of the cheese. You end up with a different cheese, even though they started exactly the same. So the flavor of place is truly important. Right. Um, and I always, I found that actually quite interesting when I um, did the, the California cheese tour, right? Mm -hmm. There was a cheese crawl that I was able to learn more about uh, the different cheese makers, of course, and the different feeds, like how you were saying, you know, being near the sea, of course, the milk that would be produced by the cows would be a little bit and the cheeses would be a little bit saltier because it's near the sea. I always found that interesting and I, I feel like, well, our viewers love this kind of information and learning more, right guys? You guys do. I think we're ready for our, we can, yes, we are foodies. And the beauty of this yeah. show actually, Mark, is that um, some of us are foodies, some of us are newbies, some of us are cookers, some of us are eaters, um, but really the thing is, we, you know, just sharing this kitchen love and the love of um, good quality ingredients, um, some found locally, some imported, mm -hmm. you know, just appreciating that and of course being willing to learn more about it. So I'm so excited to learn yeah. some more. We have three more cheeses to be paired with three more beers. But before we do that, let us announce the winner, which was, that was the fourth question, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. So that means it was the fourth person, 14344. So the winner for this last question is Cess F. Rodil, congratulations for answering correctly. The dairy industry in the in California is 250 years old. So guys, if you do want to learn more about real California milk and of course the history and how you know the dairy farms um, make their different cheeses um, and the milk in general, of course, you could visit their website as well. Real California milk. Um, okay, and you can also follow them as well, Real California Milk Philippines. Um, so we're ready for our next cheese and our next Yay. beer. What do we have next, Mark? Well, the, the next one is uh, another version of Toma, which is the same basic cheese as we had with the Tomarashi. This one is flavored with the Herbe de Provence. Uh, Herbe de Provence um, are a blend of herbs from the southern part of France that are very classic and traditional, includes most of the uh, uh, herbs that you you associate with the French, um, rosemary and thyme and basil and I uh, know basil, um, uh, chervil Parsley. and savory and a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but mm. it's it's a unique kind of herbal flavor, and yeah. the farmhouse ales typically are a little funky. Uh, they use uh, a lot of unusual wild yeasts, typically, um, and they uh, often will have a uh, um, a mold or a, an infection called Britannomyces, which gives them an almost sour flavor. 
uh, a bit of a um, almost a whiny flavor in a beer. And that complex and unique flavor that a farmhouse ale gets is accentuated uh, by the herbs that are in that cheese. They, they really carry through through into the beer. Um, the sweetness and funkiness in the beer helps the uh, works with the umami and the cheese and the herbs I find really they accentuate the flavor of the herbs in the beer to me. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you on that. And f- what I love about farmhouse ales is that it's it's not a very common type of beer, especially yeah. here in the Philippines. But when you do get to explore these kind of beers, you, you'll be surprised at how, uh, how much flavors you'll actually discover from it, especially with these kind of cheeses, mm-hmm. like the Toma, Pro- Toma Provence that we have right now, which is just an, a, it, it, it's a flavor bomb. You know, uh, it kind of reminds me of this cheese from France, also called Nenofar, which is yep. uh, covered with that herb de Provence, also, yeah, which absolutely. is very nice. One of my favorite cheeses. So, that tartiness that you get from the beer actually goes very well with that fattiness of the cheese, also, which elevates all of the flavors of the cheese. Very nice, very nice. And I, I must say, the farmhouse ales are among my favorite beers. I've been a home brewer for 25 years, and uh, we do a pretty good farmhouse ale, um, I must say. Um, I like Belgian beers to brew for a home brewing. I like to make Belgian beers in general. Um, but the, the farmhouse ales are one of my very favorites because they go with uh, – you can have a farmhouse ale with a steak. You can have a farmhouse ale with fish. I agree. Or go with nice. anything you want. Um, yeah, uh, it's I, I like Pinot Noir and wine because it's the wine that goes with anything. You know, Perfect. it goes with light, yeah. it goes with heavy, and and saisons uh, or or farmhouse ales are that type of beer, the same type of beer that goes with everything. There you go, saison. And there it is. It gets its name because they used to be made before we had refrigerators. You couldn't keep beer over the summer; it would go bad. So they would make beer oh. in the spring that was very strong. And had a lot of more preservative hops in it, and that was the beer that they would keep over the summer or the season. That's yes. where right. Cervon comes in. So it would last there. It would last yeah. over the summertime. Then, you, then you would open up your Oktoberfest beers, which was to celebrate the new harvest. So that was that was the kind of the seasons of beers. Ah, and you had winter warmer, right. but strong and malty for the dark, the cold winter months because they're very warm and high alcohol keep you warm. Beer is, beer is yes. so many more varieties than wine. I love mm. wine. I live in the wine country, <laughs> but beer is so much more fascinating to me than wine. Just well, I like them beer. both. I yep. just don't know if they like me all the time, too. So <laughs> everything okay. in moderation. I agree. <laughs> yes, agree, agree. Okay, so our next cheese is from a different maker. We haven't seen this one yet in our flight. Sierra Nevada is. Uh, uh, they come from the North Central Valley in a uh, near a town called Chico, um, where uh, one of the greatest party colleges in America resides, Chico State. Um, yeah. This um, this is a Monterey Jack, which is a California original cheese. This is one that goes back that 250 years that we've been making cheese. The recipes were brought over from Spain. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's a creamy, semi-soft cheese that's got a kind of a, a sour or a tart note at the finish. Very buttery and creamy up front and a little tart on the finish. This one has habanero uh, uh, peppers in it. And if you know about peppers... The yeah. Scoville index of peppers tells you how hot a pepper should be. Um, green bell pepper is zero. Jalapeno peppers are about seven to ten thousand. Habaneros are three hundred thousand. So you be very careful when you're dealing with habanero peppers. Um, they, you can get a pepper burn from them. Um, you can. But they, you can. the great thing about peppers is that they absolutely wake up your taste buds. Exactly. They make every taste bud in your mouth alive and ready to go. Good um, morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but the good thing about this cheese is that it's not overwhelmingly spicy. It's yes, just the I was right say amount that. of spice. 
I was going to say that it's yep. it's not. So don't be afraid no, for those no. viewers who are tuning in. This actually is a great cheese. Also, we put it in our grilled cheese. We'll mix yep. it up. We'll put this um, habanero in with another mix of other cheddars and others. Even the Leonza, we like to put it in too. Right. But it's not overly oh. spicy. So outstanding don't in omelets too. Yeah, outstanding yeah. in omelets. Like Denver omelet, it's a it makes a perfect Denver omelet. Um, oh yeah. It, and it's it's a it the pepper itself is extremely hot, but they don't use a lot of it. And cheese itself mellows the flavor of the heat as well. Um, so yes. it, it, it's one of those, the flavor starts to build and you can feel the heat and then it pl plateaus and you're like, oh, okay, that's not so bad. I like that. That's good. Right. And, exactly. And yeah, hot chili that. pepper is also relief endorphins, which actually make you happy. True. Um, yeah, that's very true. You know what? The one thing that we'll definitely get along with would be that cheese that we just had and the beer that we're having right now. So this is the Philippine ale. So it's from the same producer. Um, Monkey Eagle Brewery, and what I love about this beer is that they really made it to show how Philippine flavors could actually be. So it's just a regular ale, but with you know tropical fruits, summer flowers, anything that you can get from the Philippines, or any flavor component that you can get from the local cuisine, basically. So that tropical fruits that you get from this beer is just like mixing some fruits when you make hot sauces. Right? It's just like peppers uh, and pineapples, you know, yes. how they go well together. So it's definitely right. making that beer like a condiment to this cheese. So yeah. very nice beer. Does it have any banana esters in it? No, surprisingly not. But no? that's what I was looking for when I yeah. when I thought of tropical also. But when you smell this beer, it's very citrusy. It's almost uh -huh. like uh, like very ripe oranges, some mangoes yeah. to it, some pineapples, which is very unusual for beers also and yeah so, Philippines, that's what you want exactly yep i think this one is my favorite actually yeah very nice it's, i'm sure it's their biggest seller you know that's that is that is kind of the there's the standard beer for the philippines i mean the classic beer for the philippines yes something uh, you should try when you come and visit oh again. absolutely <laughs> I, I i was there about two years i think in 2019 uh um with uh, with reggie and we were doing a uh, um we did a beer and cheese pairing uh, for a small group at, at that event, and uh, boy, she brought out some beers from Philippines that were all craft brews, and I was just amazed. They were um, really good beers, well crafted, well designed, and, and well executed. Uh, so I'm I'm very impressed with the craft brew uh, the beers that are available. Your 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 national brewery is one of my favorites of the large brewers, but the craft brews that are available there are really really something else. Fantastic. Can't wait to get back. <laughs> we can't wait to have you back. For sure. You bet. Hopefully when things are better, let's, <sighs> let's pray for that, right? <laughs> we pray for that. Okay, I think we have um, one, one, one last cheese yep. to taste. Now, I'll tell you. People ask me, the most common question I get, other than how did you get so fat, is... Um, <laughs> In America, they're mean. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> but they, everybody asks me, oh, you're the cheese dude. What's your favorite cheese? All the time. What's your Same favorite Same thing I get with wine. Exactly. Same thing I get, and, yeah. And I tell them that I love blue cheeses. I probably eat more blue cheese than any other kind of cheese because I just love it. I like strong, stinky cheeses. But if you told me I had to pick one cheese to live on for the rest of my life on a desert island, no other cheese to go with, this is the one it would be. The Fiscalini 18 month natural bandage cheddar in my book is the greatest cheese on the planet. Um, it has won best mature cheddar in the English World Cheese Awards three times. It Believe won that. once. Um, it is incredibly deep in its flavor. If you put a piece of cheese in your mouth and chew on it and swallow it and walk away, your mouth will still be experiencing those flavors an hour later, I kid you not, it will stay on your palate for an hour. This is one of the most amazing cheeses I've ever tasted. The, the, the layers of flavor as it starts to unfold in your mouth starts fruity and rich and gets nutty and earthy. 
then it gets beefy. And then, I mean, it just, it has layer upon layer. I can't say enough about it. And this is one of the only cheeses I've ever had that pairs really well with IPAs. Uh, the, the, the depth of flavor and intensity of flavor in this cheese will stand up to even the hoppiest IPAs. Um, so this is the beer that I, of the cheese that I recommend when people say, oh, I love IPAs. I'm like, I got the cheese for you. Yeah, yeah, so which is good. really good. I mean, IPAs are really good, especially for those who are trying to explore the beer scene here in the Philippines. IPAs are very hoppy, which yep. not a lot of people like. But if you do explore it, it's just going to open your mind when it comes to different flavor components. It's very floral, very aromatic, really good on the palate, and something that will actually go well with sharp cheeses like this cheddar cheese that we have. Mm -hmm. But I do have one question for Mark. You sure. mentioned that if you were stuck in an island, you would have aged cheddar. Would you drink IPA when you get stuck in an island, since you, know, <laughs> you don't like IPA. <laughs> if the choice was IPA or seawater, I'd be all over that IPA. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go. I love the honesty. There you go. Good, good. Okay. Um, I actually remember visiting the Fiscalini Aging Room mm -hmm. where they did wrap, guys, they're like really bandage wrapped. Yep. This is a bandage wrapped cheddar. And I think the thing that impressed me most upon from what you were sharing, Mark, and is that it beat out all the other cheddars. Like it, it really is a gold gold winner here. Is, is that the right word? A gold winner? Actually, it's a, it's a triple gold winner. It won. Triple it, gold winner. If you get every judge in the judging to vote you best, yeah. that's a double gold. If everybody votes you best of the entire show, that's wow. a triple gold. Wow. So yeah, this was voted best by every judge in the competition that year. So it's a, um, and I've done a tasting that had Mariano, the, the cheese maker at the time for Fiscalini, um, and Mo uh, Montgomery, the, the gentleman that runs Montgomery Cheddar in England, one of the most famous ancient cheddars, uh, Keen's Cheddar, Isle of Mall. All four of them were there. And we did a tasting with all four of them. And the guys from England who have been doing this for 600 years couldn't tell you which one was from California. That's Look at that. Something. That um, really is saying something. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So, guys, if you haven't tried the Fiscalini Old World oh. Cheddar here, you have three of us who say this is the one to try. Yes. So you can check it out at the Old World Deli tomorrow. You can visit them over on Jupiter. And, of course, if you're one of the lucky winners, you can try this as well from um, your winnings of uh, your 5,000 peso GC from sourdough cafe and deli so um and if you don't yeah. live in metro manila it's worth going to metro manila just to eat the cheese exactly so drive from out amen. of town <laughs> stay for the day and eat cheese amen there you go okay so ian did you have anything else you wanted to add um to this pairing no we're all good i think we're all set with the cheeses but what i i would love to share with everybody is that yeah it doesn't stop here Please go ahead and try any kind of cheese that you can try, which you can get from One World Deli. Um, go ahead and try any beers also that you can try because it will just open your palate and open your mind when it comes to different flavor profiles. And you'll be surprised and you'll fall in love with food and anything beverage after that. So that's my tip for everyone. I agree with that advice. And if I was to say that, say the same thing, the only thing I would add to Ian's advice would be to make sure you eat your cheese and drink your beverage with family and friends who, of course, you could chat about and catch up and, of course, celebrate the upcoming holidays. Um, so really good stuff. And what more? How can we celebrate? Of course, with one last quiz the cook question. You guys know the drill. Make sure you share the live stream. Make sure it's public and that you have a Metro Manila address. Um, we are giving away the last. So this is one, four, three, four, four, fourth person to answer correctly. The next quiz the cook question that we will all actually. So guys, this is where you can get a little bit creative. We're going to chat about your answers. Um, 
And so it actually might not be the fourth person. We will see. We'll see how creative you are with your answers. Um, but I'll ask this question, of course. And um, are you ready? Drum roll. Okay. What makes cheese and beer a good pair? So there are lots of things that Mark mentioned, that Ian mentioned, and of course that I mentioned. Um, what makes and you're a good pair and you guys can go ahead and um, answer there in the comment section. We will deliberate and go over them so that of course the most creative and of course someone who is paying attention guys, we really do want to know that you were paying attention of what makes a good beer and cheese pair um, as we wrap up. So what makes a good what makes cheese and beer a good pair? There are so many um, reasons why we like pairing them together. Um, we spoke about them all throughout the episode. Mark and um, Ian mentioned quite a few different reasons that they go so well together. We've tried seven cheeses from Real California Milk. Um, and again, guys, if you did want to go ahead and look for Real California Milk cheeses, all you have to do is look for the seal. Um, it's that little yellow um, Real California Milk seal. You look for the seal and you know you're going to get quality cheeses. So we have lots of people answering. I will, it sees, it, I see quite a few of some of our, our viewers who are regular viewers and some new viewers as well. Um, we have Noemi and John, Erica, Cece. Uh, oh nice God. to see you guys here. Maine, of course, oh Anthony. We have lots of answers. Wow. I love that you guys are giving us I wouldn't even know how to say that name. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we won't ask you. But for the record, Mark, when you are looking for that fish that you like, you can yes. say it's bangus. Bangus. No wonder yes. I don't get it right. Yes. <laughs> I've just seen it written. I, you know, I've, just, I've seen it on a menu. I'm like, oh, I want that and that, that. What's? Oh, I never had that one before. Perfect. You got that from the Same great one. world. Yeah, actually, so when, when Nino and I were still dating and um, I visited here, I remember sitting in traffic. It's really hard for those of us that don't know, um, of course, the enunciation or didn't grow up understanding or speaking Tagalog. I remember he thought I was so cute because I pronounced Iha Iha, which was actually, <laughs> which was actually Ihao Ihao, yeah. <laughs> which I've learned, I've learned through many years of living here. Yeah. And I remember saying that, what's, what is that? And he was like, oh, you're so cute. So it was yeah. endearing. It was endearing for him. But of course, I would like to learn how to say it properly as well. So we have, guys, we have so many answers. You have to help me. Oh, um, we can, yeah. We can chat in the private chat. Um, wow, guys, good answers for everyone no tuning in. Um, we love that you are paying attention, of course, and giving us some of your own creative answers as well. Jeez, yep, yep, yep. Man, you guys really, <laughs> you guys really were listening. Yeah. I'm in, I'm in trouble. I'm going to lose my job. No. <laughs> We won't do that. Uh, wow. Yeah, that's a lot of answers. <laughs> and good, good ones, too. Good ones, too. Really good. Yes, really good, really good ones. Um, you know, I love that you guys are, um, that are really paying attention and really, I think some of you might have Googled some, so that's resourceful. Yeah. Um, Cheaters. <laughs> well, we are online. It's okay. Um, so, guys, while it's so hard to choose. It's so hard. So, while we are choosing and while... 
while we are looking through all of your answers, guys, you know, um, real California milk cheeses are available all over the metro. And of course, even in Cebu, I believe they're also available in Cebu. Um, and some of the cheeses you can find not just in One World Deli. If you're not in Makati, there are other places as well. Um, here you go. It's so hard to choose, you guys. This actually is really exciting for us because, of course, it's very straightforward when we normally choose our winners. And this way, we're actually giving... Um, live feedback. Yeah. And this is awesome. I love the live feedback. Um, we get to see firsthand what you guys were, were paying attention. Okay, so I think, I think we will, I love that you guys researched because it really does look like you Googled <laughs> something. <laughs> so I think we have a winner. Uh, let's just confirm. I've sent a couple. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We'll just check if um, you've shared the live stream. So we'll have social media check. I think we do have a winner. Um, I love that you guys are all just so excited. I can see like some of the comments no dying to win this, excited, um, and lots of good info, creative answers, creative yeah. answers. Oh, no. Okay, so the person that we chose did not share the live stream. We'll go back. And um, guys, it really you really have to share the live stream for us. We want to share all the cheesy beer knowledge. Okay, so let's see. It looks like we yep. have to choose someone new. So why do we want you to share the live stream? We want everybody to understand and learn more about our cheeses. And um, for those of you guys who are tuning in and would like to win, okay, so it looks like we have a winner because this was the longest we've ever gone without finding... <laughs> were you on edge, Ian? Did you? Were you nervous, Ian? Mark, yeah. you were you were interested in the answers, not nervous at all. No, no, I'm yes. fascinated. But yeah. you got you have a really good audience, man. <laughs> Yay, I'm so glad you think so. So that means yeah. they just want to learn more about cheese. Okay, yeah. guys, we will announce our winner. Cool. Um, let's see if I can find where that person answered because I would like to read the answer that was chosen. Maybe we can copy paste it here. Oh, there you go. I found it. Okay. So our winner is Carrie Dre. Congratulations. You are the fifth and final winner. Beer has a highly complex taste and refreshing carbonation, especially the carbonation works well with cheese as it cuts the denseness and the richness of most cheese. And in this case, we even have some of the herbs and the different things that are mixed in with the cheese as well. That's not a bad answer. So congratulations, Carrie. You win one GC for 5,000 pesos that you can avail of all the different types of California cheeses from Sourdough Cafe and Deli. Make sure you say what's up to Chef Alvin. Tell him that Michelle said hello. Okay, guys, that's it. This gives us another idea on how we can celebrate Noche Buena with the family and anyone who we will be celebrating for with this these, this holiday season. Okay, if you have any questions or comments, of course, you can still leave them in the comment section and we'll get back to you. Of course, if you'd like to follow Real California Milk Philippines, you can find them on Facebook and on Instagram, of course. And be sure, guys, you are here um, 
you know, checking us out and watching and learning along with us. We want to know what you want to learn about too. So share in the comment section if there's an episode that you would like us to focus on something you want to learn more about with food. Um, I am Michelle Aventajado. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Mark, where can people find you on social media if they want to learn more about cheese? Um, I'm Mark Todd, the cheese dude on uh, Instagram, and I'm the cheese dude at AOL.com is my email, and I don't care if people get it because <laughs> I answer questions about cheese all the time, you know? So, okay. Yep. Thank you. And Ian, if, um, if our viewers would like to learn more about uh, beer and cheese pairing or wine and cheese pairing. And of course, how can they follow you? And of course, share One World Deli's um, sock med profiles as well. Yeah. All right. So you can follow me on Instagram. It's just Odilio. It's O-D-E-E-L-Y-O. -E -E and you can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook for One World Deli. It's just One World Deli. One word. <laughs> all right. And hope to see you there in the store also when we open tomorrow. Fantastic. And a special yeah, fantastic, you. guys. Make sure you go visit. They're on Jupiter here in Makati. Um, I know that my husband will go by and swing by and visit as well. Thank you so much to our sponsor today, Real California Milk. Of course, for the yummy cheeses, educating our viewers about how we compare cheese and beer. This is Kitchen 143. Of course, if you would like to learn more about holiday gatherings, tune in next week and the week after where we talk about how we can celebrate some more. Um, thank you so much, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Cheers. 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 Cheers.